we back on our regular grind Lions talk. We're talking about trades, potential trades that, you know, probably won't happen because we know how the NFL is with trades and the money. We'll talk about that after this introduction. It's your boy CJ Goodfella back to Motor City, back with Motor City Lions talk. Appreciate everybody for uh, subscribing and sharing the videos and commenting. Man, I'll try to get back to as many comments as I can. Um, I do work working on Facebook and stuff of that nature, so try to get back to all you guys as much as possible. Appreciate everybody that's been dedicated and um, you know watching the page and they, all the other uh, Lions pages. I've been paying attention to um, like you guys' material, trying to get where y'all guys are at. But um, you know it's that time of the year. The Lions are three and three. It may be this might be a great year to pull off a blockbuster trade, but um, like I said, I'm gonna talk about the trade some. Some of these trades in the NFL is that, you know, the old team got to pay the majority of the salary or something like that. And that's what makes NFL trades tricky because how the money is, uh, is you know, spread out throughout the contract. And some of these guys are going to be tough to trade or, or guys to be, trade, to be traded for. And that's why you don't see too many blockbuster trades happen in the NFL like you see in, in the NBA um, and other sports. But, um, you know, um, you know, lines are three and three. Easily could be, you know, you know, above 500, way more than that. A robbery in Atlanta. I mean, a meltdown versus Carolina. Uh, I think the Atlanta, uh, you know, the Atlanta BS really hurt us. And I think it killed our morale and injuries to Golden Tate. Um, the New Orleans Saints, you know, Stafford was injured and they was a hot team. It seems like the Lions, you know, tend to get teams when they're at their very, very best and when they're at their hottest. Look at Carolina. Um, New Orleans, you know, you know, Atlanta was kind of a little bit hot coming in. Now they didn't cooled off. So, um, it is what it is, man. But I, I got a few, you know, prime trade candidates starting off with Eric Ebron, man. Uh, I heard it was a wrong, you know, just somebody threw it out there about, uh, I forget the name, one pride something. I'm sorry. I forget the website. Good page. Um, about, you know, Eric Ebron getting traded to the Patriots for Dwayne Allen. I don't think we need another tight end to trade it for, um, you know, trade, you know, you know, Eric Ebron to New England for Dwayne Allen and the sixth round pick. Um, I'm just not feeling that. I don't want to tight end back. I think Fails and Roberts, we can just roll with them um, and bring somebody up, you know, Cole Wick off the practice squad or something like that and just roll with it because, you know, right now we're not getting nothing from e Ebron. He was one catch, nine receptions versus those linebackers from New Orleans. Uh, clearly, you know, we, I don't know if it's just him or it's the coaching. But if he's traded somewhere else and once he moves on, we're going to find out if it was him or the coaching. And if he goes to New England and they find a fit for him, he's going to play that H-back kind of role like Aaron Hernandez did. And if he if he blows up becomes good in New England and starts being in a position to be a winner and be successful, then we know it's the coaching. And I, I really, really believe it is the Lions coaching, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I think the defensive side of the ball is premium coaching over there. It's the best coach you're going to get from Terrell Austin. Um, with the offensive line coach, the offensive coordinator, the tight ends coach, I'm, I'm skeptical about them to keep it real. But I would not want to see Eric Ebron go to New England because he may tear it up. But, um, you know, if it's the best trade, I just won't want a tight end back for him. Maybe your draft pick, a fifth, sixth, seventh rounder, and something back for him. Maybe that theoretic is another guy that was talking. This is, you know, you know, guys talking about trading. Uh, trading. Um, I think theoretic uh, is a solid guy, you know, but I, I just think, you know, Having Golden Tate being that slot receiver, he's just not a good enough runner to be, you know, with our team unless you trade him or Abdullah and keep one. You know, we'll talk about that a little later. I don't know would it be a good trade candidate for him. Um, some of the top teams looking for a receiving back. Um, it's tough. Um, just off the top of the mental. Um, you know, I, I really can't think. Maybe uh, I, I really don't know. Baltimore might be a team that need a receiving back. Uh Probably a few other teams out there that might need one. Um, you know, New England got several of those already. Um, you know, Seattle might be one. Um, you know, Dallas might be another one. But, you, I mean, you never know. You know, people are looking for a valuable slot receiver and kind of scat third down back. Theoretic could be another one. Amir Abdul is another guy. I just don't see him doing it. I don't see him becoming a complete running back with the Lions. For years, you know, people been talking about the line. It's the line. We'll get you a running back that can make his own holes and don't need to be uh, high maintenance and doesn't and, and can stay healthy. It can just, you know, create space and have good vision. Um, I think it's time to move on from Amir Abdullah. If I had to pick the choice between Theoretic and Amir Abdullah, for me, I'd rather keep Theoretic and let, you know, Zach Zinner handle the inside load. I think it's just time to move on from Amir Abdullah. I don't think homie that good, man. 
Um, that's just my personal opinion. And then Ziggy Ansah is another guy. I say Ziggy Ansah because he hasn't been healthy the last two years. And, you know, potentially the Lions going to have to open up the bank to pay Ziggy Ansah. Do you want to pay a guy that hasn't been healthy? Understand that he's very, a very good pass rusher. Um, but, you, you know, Lions have consistently developed pass rushers and found pass rushers in the past. Um, you know, if he has, you know, if he started getting hot down the stretch, you know, or before the trade deadline, maybe so. But I just don't want him to walk away from nothing. If they know right now they're not going to sign Ziggy to what he wants, I'd rather him move on. And, you know, some bonus talk real talk real quick. Um, I would like to see them go out to A.J. Green, man. You know, um, I would love to see them go out to A.J. Green. I don't know if the Bengals are shopping him, and they probably not. And that's uh, Stafford's former teammate. Um, I would give up whatever for A.J. Green. You know, I would mortgage the future for a guy like that. Um, if I had to give up Marvin Jones, if I can keep Marvin Jones and Golden Tate and give up Kenny Galladay, um, Eric Ebron, Ziggy Ansel, whatever I had to give up. Because, um, you know, Golden Tate is the last year of this deal, so the money shouldn't be ba- that bad. Um, Kenny Galladay is, is real cheap. Um, Ziggy Ansel, you know, the last year of his rookie deal. Eric Ebron, last year of his rookie deal. Some draft picks. You can make it happen to make the pot sweet for Cincinnati. We know their owner is very cheap and very frugal. They, uh, Mike Brown is the owner. He, he doesn't want to switch coaches. He probably didn't want to pay A.J. Green the money that he did get. So, um, you know, they losing, and A.J. Green is not, you know, having an impact because the Cincinnati Bengals cannot block up front. Um, that would be a guy I'd like to see the Lions bring in and make that trade, man. He's under contract, so you got to worry about him leaving. And the franchise tag can protect the franchise. Another guy is uh, Sammy Hill from that same team. I'd love to see them go out to Sammy Hill, the running back, as well. You know, um, other guys, you know, uh, maybe a defensive back if they can get one, a solid defensive back, and Cincinnati has several. I know a lot of Michigan State fans, this Lions fans, Dark Horse Denard is another press corner that's, that's impressed me this year. Um, and some other guys out there as well that uh, you probably could take a look at that's probably, you know, teams are probably looking to move away from. But I think the biggest needs for the Lions is they really going to make a trade, which probably is not going to happen. We're being, bringing in another defensive back, a receiver, um, and some offensive linemen. I think if they can get those and a defensive tackle, that's good at run stopping. But um, we'll see. We'll see. This is just water cooler talk, just, you know, basic trade talk. We probably know the Lions ain't going to make any big-time trades because in the NFL, when a trade deadline approach around what, week seven, week eight, it just doesn't happen. You know, it's not like baseball and basketball. But um, let me know what y'all think. We out.